the word of yahweh elohim lord god is alive and powerful sharper than any two edged sword piercing even to the dividing asunder of the soul and the spirit and the joints and the marrow and it is a critic of thoughts and intents of the heart All scripture is God breathed and is profitable for doctrine for reproof for correction and for instruction in righteousness that the man of God might be mature thoroughly furnished unto all good works study to show thyself approved unto God a workman that needeth not to be ashamed rightly dividing the word of truth or very accurately handling this very great unique infallible and inerrant great word of truth Glory be to my Yahweh Sidkenu, the only righteous Lord, my rock. The one who has been termed as Adonai Eloheinu, Adonai Echad. To such great Lord of a God, who has made after his own image this man. By the lips of our us, when we walk in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. When we make our inner man, Nipesh, the soul. to have the great thoughts of reality in our lives by putting upon the new man and to follow him the new man being made in the terms of endikaya sunekaya hosiate is tesalatia and when we walk in the right righteousness of the lord in the fellowship of truth in the indwelling mentoring ministry of lord god the holy spirit to such great lord of our god be the glory when we realize the day of his birth of incarnation today and in return after the day of pentecost once again came in the form of the spirit the same christ our lord of our god in the spirit and dwelling in each and every believer's life being baptized and kept apart every believer for his work in order to realize and to understand their calling to imitate God the Father in heaven as we are being called techna beloved through our lips through our lives through every breath that we take in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit make it to the lord of a god be the glory to the highest we shall not be the people when our lord of a god wants to look and there is none to uphold his glory and to show forth among this heathen the people where the name of the lord of a god is not dreadful terrible among them therefore they have been given the freedom of their thoughts in the privacy of their volition to seek those gods for them they seem fit but the sad part is we are able to look upon the same things even in the christendom today the christendom of this where the people are considering in their own terms to be wise as such today the day of the birth of a lord of a god being celebrated as hanukkah long back joining now from the seven days of festival till to jan first a feast of dedication and feast of lights has been replaced by the so called xmas and in fact even they do not even know the word merry what does it mean merry christmas they call but they don't know what it is to live and to have a brightful blissful christmas for them how can we when we grieve and squelch and lie to the indwelling mentoring ministry of lord get the holy spirit christ is born the lord of a god as a savior to this earth for that reason glory be to the lord of a god to the highest and the result of it the peace to be upon this mankind the peace where we have been given the privilege by faith alone in christ alone to understand once saved always saved to realize that lord of a god will not deny us 
Though we are faithless, he stands faithful for us. But constantly grieving and squelching and lying and not being in the fellowship of that God, the Holy Spirit takes the instructions from the Lord to correct you. As our Lord of God chastens his own sons at the word. So we will be corrected to come back to be to the imitators of God, says Ephesians 5 1. Not imitators of Christ, not imitators of Ladgad the Holy Spirit, but in fact, indeed, imitators of God. Why? Because the Trinity is one. When you're imitating God the Father, you're imitating Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, you're imitating Ladgad the Holy Spirit. How can we do so? First, believe in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and you shall be saved. And when you have been there in the constant fellowship of Ladgar, the Holy Spirit at every breath of your life to redeem the time since the days are evil. And to be in the fellowship of Ladgar, the Holy Spirit, walking in the fellowship of Ladgar, the Holy Spirit, living in the fellowship of Ladgar, the Holy Spirit, you are cleansing now the garbage of your soul through the word of the Lord of God, anything that is not in accord to the word which is so greatly used in Lamentations 1.10. The word which we have been studying in Lamentations 1.11 as well. The word Ra'e, which has been used to look intellectually. But Christ our Lord our God calls not only to look intellectually, but he goes further when the cry of the people is been recorded for our correction, for our instruction, so that the Old Testament end samples could be used as a great one at every breath to realize the failure of the Old Testament saint should not happen in our lives and we need to be absolutely eligible for that to scan ourselves. Whether we are in the fellowship of Ladgad, the Holy Spirit, or not. And whether we are being there constantly learning the mind of Christ or not. When we look upon the two words used in Lamentations, one love and one is Ra'e, and the other one is Nabat, a neighbor. Ra'e meant to say, to look intellectually. Nabat meant to say, to scan intently to search in you intently whether we are in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, so that that can give the pleasure to the Lord our God, so that Christ our Lord our God can have respect. That's what even Cain and Abel. Lord had respect to the offerings of Abel, but for Cain he did not. That's what the word meant to say, Naba. And over here in Lamentations 1, 11, we read very specifically to the restore of our soul, O Lord, you see. Yahweh, you look into the matter because we have become the word in the Hebrew, zal zal, which meant to say very specifically vile or squanderer or tremulous. Rather than being the imitators of our Lord, our God, in this church age, at every breath of our life, being under the controlling and ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. So that it is not only just one unique day that we can celebrate the birthday of the Lord, our God, as incarnated person. But every breath of our life, it has been told to rejoice in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and rejoice in the Lord, our God, not grieving, not squelching, not lying. But in return, to become the imitators of the Lord of God, says Ephesians 5, 1. And what it is, walk in love as Christ our Lord of God has walked and shown an example for us to give our life as a living sacrifice to Christ. If our Lord of God could nabat you, could scan intently in you, can you regard with pleasure that you are constantly the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit? And if you are in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, constantly, do you know what does he say? 
he delights that you grow up in the knowledge of Bible doctrine. He delights for you to follow him. He delights for you to tell, let the world bury the world, let the dead bury the dead. But you follow me, take up your cross and follow me. He is regarding with pleasure in you to delight and to look and to see that you are put on the new man in the terms of Endikaya, Sunekai, Hosiatis, Thessalatia, and in the, in the holiness and in the benignity of truth. Are you walking in his truth? Are you being there in the truth? Are you being just there to quote the scriptures? Are you really performing your lives as scriptures? That's what really makes the difference. When Apostle Paul meant to say, be you followers of me, doesn't mean to say for you that he has not married and therefore you should be like him because that's the doctrinal, that's the demonic doctrinal of teaching. He had a different gift. He had a gift of celibacy. But he was intending, be you followers of me, very specifically to walk as he walked in Christ. He walked to follow the rule of Christ. He established to tell the words which our Lord our God fulfilled to say that the house of the prayer of the Lord our God has been made a den of thieves today and furthermore he reveals in Revelation 2 and 3 Satan's synagogue, Satan's point of throne being established and Satan has kept over there the copulation business to produce false pastor teachers therefore he tells to look upon in 2nd Corinthians chapter 11 and following to teach for us a great admonition in verse number 12 till to the point of verse number 28 you shall know them by their deeds they are the meta schematizoans they are not the metamorphomines how can we be the imitators of God and be at the same time meta, meta schematizoans, not being to change from our inner attitude? And what does he meant to say to follow the rule? He was telling to follow the rule of Mary in my care for the church every day, every day, every day. The right intention of the theological seminar was being established by Lewis Perry Chaffer. In the Dallas Theological Seminary, it was to go word upon word, line upon line, precept upon precept with the proper exegeomai. And the one who has established the church, now when we can go and look, it has come to the sensibility training. No emphasis is furthermore for, day up, for word upon word, line upon line, precept upon precept, or to look upon the word of the Lord of our God day by day, yesterday, today, tomorrow. How will the people be the imitators of God? Or you're not to get acquainted with the place where you survive. It requires that you should know it thoroughly. We are pilgrimage trip on this earth, and the world should know in us thoroughly Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has been born on this day. The world should look into us, Christ. Does not Galatians 4:19 tells the only one word Morphete used once in the Bible? Christ should be formed in you, the image to be developed in you. If you have a greater phytonologia and if you have greater morologia, you will certainly end up replacing exegiomai with phytonologia and morologia. You will end up to produce antichrist instead of Christ being born in you. Everything or anything that is against the mind of Christ our Lord our God that is antichrist and Christ our Lord our God has not taken birth in you. How our Lord our God will take birth in you by believing upon the gospel. The gospel of good news that a Savior has been born unto us. Whose name is wonderful, whose name is Council of Peace, whose name is Prince of Peace. Who is an everlasting father. And what the people want to look in the entire Bible or the New Testament or the Old Testament. Like the way how the that challenges. Can you tell in one verse where our Lord our God is? Can you tell in one verse where Christ our Lord our God said, I am God, worship me? Ephesians 5.1 is enough. Be you imitators of God. 1 Corinthians 4.1, love and one is enough. Romans 16.17 is enough. And though answering him not back because he is a dichotomous nature and we look upon the trichotomous nature, because the Hebrew thought always has not the following culture of Greek or Latin. Dichotomy might have been developed by Greek and Latin men, but trichotomous is always been found in the mind of the Hebrew thought. When we look upon the word hi a, which meant to say, I am what I am, a gihomi o how, 
the principal word for that is our lord our god teaches in the thoughts of hebrew word which is constantly dynamic not static he, procro he proclaims his word through dynamic categories first he came along says hebrews 1 chapter 1 verses 1 and 3 and following earlier time he spoke with such and such man but now he has sent his only dear beloved son that's the dynamic category of him he further revealed himself through the theophanes through the christophanes but now he made himself as flesh so that the last enemy death could be destroyed but the sad part is today in today's christendom dear brethren the people are not able to realize what it is if our Lord our God could scan intently in you, Nabat. And if he's not able to see in you that character of the Lord our God besides his great incarnation, what we enjoy today as Christmas. Such great incarnation, wherewith if every believer could wake up to realize such great thought in Christ they would certainly realize they have been put upon the new man they ought to put upon the new man without walking in the terms of righteousness and justice before his presence without able to walk in the benignity of truth in his word what else we can do when we look upon and understand galatians 5 1 stand fast therefore and be not be held again in the yoke of bondage why Christ our Lord our God came. He came to destroy the works of the devil. To free men from their vile service. Zal zal. Why from their vile attitude. Tremulous attitude. Squander attitude. That's what the Israelites were been looking in Lamentations 1 11. For what they were to restore their soul in the mind of Christ. They are restoring their soul with the food that which is not even worthy enough. And what did they become? For the some pieces of bread or for some handful of barley. When we look upon in Ezekiel 34 or in fact indeed Jeremiah 12 or Jeremiah 23. The word of the Lord our God which has to be fed to the flock is been absolutely destroyed. Then what do they feed? They feed the rationalism, the empiricism of this earth. And what does it result in? Wild service, squanderous service, tremulous service. One Hebrew word, zal zal, is not even equivalent to translate in these three English words Trem tremulous, squanderer, and wild. And we go to take the wild. To be more appropriate for you to understand your standards of life when our Lord our God can scan you out can look intently is he having any pleasure over you is he having any respect over your life as a living sacrifice to Christ and yet you want to celebrate the things of the Lord's birthday without the Lord's birthday what we have we have no salvation we have no mind of Christ we have no purpose and reason that before the foundation of the world, our Lord our God has chosen and kept to be holy and blameless. And why did Christ our Lord our God came? He came to destroy the works of devil and free men from their vile service. The service which is like a filthy rags, ministrous cloths, to be more specific. The service where they think they're doing Lord's work. But when our Lord our God could look anything or everything that is against the word of the Lord our God. Not taking care of the church in the standards of Marinma every day. Do you know what does he call? He calls it as karam, reprobate minds, baseless minds. They're not qualified. They're adokima. Yet Christ our Lord our God has given for every believer equal privilege and equal opportunity to see that they imitate God the Father in heaven, not just Christ our Lord or Lord God the Holy Spirit. They have to be for what? They have to be the imitators of God as how when they have been techna, techna, techna children. How can techna children be developed if they are not being taught every day? 
If they are not been understood in Proverbs 8, 34, their work of daily coming and waiting in the door portals of the Lord our God, because happy will be the person who finds knowledge and wisdom of the mind of Christ, who is able to listen, Shama, who is able to be alert, Shadak, and who is able to guard, Shamas. And does not the word of the Lord our God teach us in Proverbs 8, 6, 7 and 8 to learn the importance of Nagid work? The importance of king, the importance of to be a rule, the importance of where Christ of Lord Avagad says in the same verse of Daniel 9.25, the kingship work. How many men are not able to realize the work of the word of the Lord Avagad when he mentions very specifically in Daniel chapter 9 verses 25. When we understand the chapters where Daniel was being used as a spokesman to the Lord Avagad, while he has made every believer now for Christ as a New Testament prophet. When we look upon the work of the Old Testament prophet, the Navy of the Aramic word, it calls for us to take an example of the same Daniel. When we look upon in Daniel chapter 7 through 12, the visions and the revolutions that God gave to his servant Daniel himself, where with hundreds, hundreds of years earlier, Amos writes the same thing to tell the Lord Jehovah will do nothing but he will reveal his secret unto his servants, the prophets. But he has made us now to be the friends. He has made us to be the New Testament prophets. Do we know what is the secret of him? Do we know that we need to walk in the absolute standards of holiness in the benignity of truth? Do we know what is his purpose for us? Do you know what he is intending for us in Ephesians 5.1? He is intending for us to imitate him, to follow him in his work, in his standards. What he is, his absolute standards of righteousness and justice. He is always the truth. He is always the veracity. He will never lie. He will never change. He is not immutable. He is constantly the same. Though he is a self-existent one of the word higher, it meant to say for us, he is a dynamic category one. In the past dispensation he revealed, in the present dispensation he reveals, in the future dispensation again he reveals. What does he reveal? He reveals for us everything what the man of sinful mankind requires and to ordain and to guard his walk in Christ. And not just walk in Christ, but to give his life as an imitator to the Lord our God. The secrets belong to the prophets of the Lord our God. And Daniel knew this principle long back who writes again in Daniel 9.25, the Nagid work of Christ. And the same thing what we read again in Proverbs 8.6, I shall speak to you the excellent things, the things of Nagid, the things of the work of the Lord our God, the things of every believer should be as a believing priest, a believing king, so that he can understand the work that has to be fulfilled in Deuteronomy 17.18 to refer back to the past dispensation, to the present, and to leave behind to the future dispensation, so that it could become an everlasting name, a name which our Lord our God certainly deserves through our lives. Though you can use it anthropomorphically, or anthropopathically, the soul of the Lord our God delights in them who delight in the word of the Lord our God. That's it. Who delights to know what is to imitate Christ. Who delights to know what it is to be in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. When we look upon the first incident in Ananiah and Sapphira life, the way how they lied to the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, and they have been put to death, doesn't it say for them, any unrighteous deed that cannot trespass against my Lord? But you may ask today how it is. Why we are still yet alive, though we grieve and squelch and lie. Because he remembers us that we are dust. He has given his great treasure of equal privilege and equal opportunity. He purchased you with his great precious blood. And he knows that today or tomorrow, if he can use, rebound and get back to learn and to understand the seriousness of the condition of this church, categories of evil apostasy, what we are going through. And if you will wake up to listen to his voice, you will certainly come back to learn the word. That's what he knew very well. Therefore, he warns you about the Fithanlogia discourses. He warns you about the Moralogia discourses. 
and he calls you to put only one thing for which our Bible has been designed and the pulpits have been designed and the male spiritual pastor teachers bona fide gifted that men have been designed is for Axi Jomai with proper isagogics and categories. He knows that. Because with Lord of God, nothing is impossible. He's going to rise those men who will certainly come back again and will put to the pulpits exegeomaya's number one priority word upon word line upon line precept upon precept day by day day by day day by day yesterday today tomorrow yesterday today tomorrow the same thing again they continue lord's hand is not short in providing them if your evolution is negative to look upon large calling if your evolution is negative to understand that our lord our god has a mystery for you in the church age the mystery of godliness, the mystery of spiritual life, the mystery of true honoring to Lord's word above his name. If you don't wake up to such fact, your life doesn't make any meaning at all, dear brethren. Be careful about that. Your life doesn't have any intention at all. Your life may seem good for you in your own terms. But the things which have been revealed for us, and the bona fide duty of the pastor teacher in teaching them every day, even if he fails to do that every day, even he is not the man of God. How can he let go of the things pertaining to Christ for exchanging the silly, stupid things of this earth? We shall compromise today because it is a Christmas. We shall come back tomorrow because we have been tired by going along for carols. <laughs> what is the right intention of the word of the Lord of our God? to renovate the standards of your thinking, to get the renovation in your terms of metamorphomai from inside, not to wear again the hypocritical masks of life and call your following Christ. Shame upon such men who deceive themselves, appearing something to be there in an inner man, not giving the greatest inner commitment to the Lord of our God, but only showing forth the mere superficial sacrifice or commitment they show only mere superficial obedience the word of the Lord our God says morning one hour evening one hour you know to be trained the people go against it so what let them have their own fate but we don't stop we go along to teach every day because that's the intention of the mind of Christ and we go along to do that whether by far death is there in our life even that day, I love to come to the presence of the Lord our God and teach His word because I need to be standing in the person of the gap when our Lord our God could seek that there is a man who has been there for Lord's work. And He trains us for that work. He makes us to be immortal until the work of Christ our Lord our God has been done in our lives. He makes every step of us to be ordained for the glory of the Lord our God. Every breath every minute water we drink from there every breath we breathe every physical food we consume it will be in the plan of the lord of our god because he has a purpose and mind for us and nothing that has been defiled nothing that has been unrighteous will enter into our mouth because we have to do large work we cannot be absolutely slumbered we have the spirit of the power of the Lord our God which has been given for us in 2 Timothy 1, 7 to tell of good courage, of sound mind and of love. The love towards Christ our Lord our God what he has best of it today by being born in the incarnation terms. How great the love of God the Father in designing his own son for us. And the love what we pay back do you know what it is? Ephesians 5 to teach us. As Christ our Lord our God loved and gave himself for us. Even we need to walk. But what is our love before his love? Our love has been taken care of by the pilgrimage trip. The lustful patterns of your old sin nature to say. Who is going to come and listen to the word every day? Does not the word of the Lord our God say for us. If you love me keep my commandments. Does not the word of the Lord of God teach to the pastors, you know greater love than this, that the shepherd will lay down his soul, his inner attitude, his inner mind. The five facets of the soul, the mentality, the evolution, the emotion, the norms and standards. 
so that you can understand what it is that we pay back to the Lord our God in soul not the terms that you appear outside not the degrees that you hold outside not the theological courses that have gone through outside but your inner man inner commitment inner pain towards the Lord our God like the way how Psalmist writes in 22 verse 14 to describe the presence of the Lord our God to say that like water he has been poured out his all bones have been disjoined his heart has become like wax if you don't go to such scanning in the Lord of our God to look every thought, every facet of the cell of your body, whether it has been in the righteous fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, or it is in the terms of the cunningness of your own old sin nature reigning to tell and to stop and to constantly grieve and squelch and lie to the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. You cannot certainly understand what it meant to say for us that we are in Christ. He doesn't look. Even at you, if you have been thinking, I am doing large work and not being in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit. If you are grieving and squelching and lying, how can you pay back your love towards the Lord of God? By the clothes that you wear and come today, by the ornament of design that you wear today. Look upon the ornaments of the skirts which our Lord our God has called to put upon a new man. The new man's skirts in the terms of righteousness and holiness of the truth, in the benignity of his truth. Not the garments that you wear outside today will make the difference for you to be pleasable to the Lord and imitating Christ as Lord our God said for us, imitate God the Father in heaven. The secrets belong to the New Testament prophets because we have not the completed canon of scripture. How are, we really how are we really diligently seeking the truth? Get out of the wild service for which our Lord our God was being incarnated today to represent through his resurrection and his crucifixion on the cross that too has redeemed his people from all iniquity and he has ransomed from the power of the grave to destroy the last enemy as death and him that has the power of death which is nothing but the devil. What a sad part it is, dear brethren. It should have been the divine dynamics of the Lord of a God that would have become in the pulpits the demonic dynamics in the church. Constantly seeking new programs, new attitudes, new alterations. Constantly considering their life to be great in those new alterations. But Paul Apostle tells for us his intense spiritual battle in prayer for the believers, constantly to be encouraged and united in the concealed doctrine of love of God and not to be beguiled, not to be fithan logia, not to be easily deceived by the vain attitudes of this man. And constantly the enemy seeks to discourage and divide. But he knows that when we are encouraged, we are ready to produce fruit for God. Therefore, he also knows that when we focus on Christ, this will bring practically among unity of the believers. And Paul's combat was in teaching and prayer was to help the believers to stay focused on Christ, satisfied with their riches in him, and not to go and to not to tell that Christ, our Lord our God, did not marry, so Paul did not marry, and even we shall follow Paul. No. He had a different gift. He had a gift of celibacy, dear brother. Those who have the gift of celibacy, they work for that. I don't think that's the imitation in Christ. What Apostle Paul intended was so that you could be united in the knowledge of the word of the Lord of our God every breath so that you can be capable of imitating God the Father. Not just imitating anyone else. And the people should understand the word Trinity, though it has not been found in the Bible, it represents God is one in essence, but personified for us in three persons. Imitating God is imitating Christ, is imitating Lord God, the Holy Spirit. Three are one. Because he himself manifested for us, so that in the terms of anthropomorphism, or if the terms of anthropopathism, they can understand why God the Father planned, God the Son executed, and God the Holy Spirit is revealing for us this information. The phase one which has been planned by God the Father, executed by Lord and Savior Jesus Christ for our salvation.
The phase two of the spiritual life after salvation by faith alone in Christ alone, which does not need you to go and take baptism in the water and have your question to say whether you have been saved or not and to look upon the works of do doing the deeds of this flesh of this world and thinking that I have to do such and such for my salvation, I have to do such and such for this work. If not, Lord our God will not give me eternal life. What a sad part it is when we look in the Christendom, such teaching yet, though the completed canon of scripture says, once saved, always saved. It's an insult upon the word of the Lord our God when the people don't believe that they have been saved by faith alone in Christ alone. It's an insult when the people work works. It's an insult that they want to see their hope, but not believe the word of the Lord our God is enough to believe his power. It's an insult like the way how John the how Thomas did in the Gospel of John. Until as I put my finger upon the wound, what he had, I shall not believe. But what did our Lord say? Happy are they who believe upon me by not looking. His word is enough. Does not you look upon the way how our Lord our God said in the path of his pilgrimage trip on this earth for three and a half years of his ministry? I haven't found a great faith in Israel apart from this. He was shocked when the centurion said, Lord, you speak the word, it's enough. We have the completed kind of scripture and we have been told to daily learn the word of the Lord of our God. And when our Lord of our God teaches for us for every day to come and learn the word, and they say, no, we will work our works. We will work our miracles. We will work our healings. We will speak in our tongues. What a shame it is. They are not able to consider the right mind of Christ. Because of their unbelief. Because of the deeds of them being absolutely evil. They don't expose themselves in the truth. Exposing themselves to the truth is daily coming to the mind of Christ. Daily getting graduated in the word of the Lord our God every day. If Christ our Lord our God can nab at you. Can scan you. Can he regard with pleasure over you? Can he regard with respect over you? Because you have been more fighting Christ in you. He reflects that which is of his own, dear brethren. The flesh energy activities, the flesh energy life will be burnt off, saith our Lord. Because the flesh energy life will not comprehend with the spirit. The spirit will never comprehend with the flesh energy life. The spirit seeks what is of the heaven. The flesh seeks what is of the earth to satisfy in your terms to think that you have been greatly gifted and saved. And to tell that you are doing good works to be saved because you have taken baptism. You are doing this. You are doing that. All those things vanish off from your thoughts. You are being saved by one divine good work. And you have been called to walk in the divine good works of Agatha Sune, which is to follow one upon the another in the ages to be proved that that great good work is nothing but learning and growing up in the knowledge of Bible doctrine so that you will be ready enough to face the situation with knowledge of Christ, getting every thought into captivity of him. If you don't reach for such perfection, if you don't reach for such maturity, your life is vain, your life has been entangled once again in the yoke of bondage of sins. The principle wherewith we have been told, once saved, always saved. Don't try to replace them with your gimmicks, with your tricks. Don't produce such false teachings in the pulpits to tell. You need to work out your own salvation. But the Philippians, when it's been written there, it tells, work out the deeds which have been worth for your salvation. What are the deeds? Number one, grow up in grace and knowledge of Bible doctrine. And about that, if you are a believer in the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, be controlled of the Spirit. When you have been there in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, it searches and takes nothing but the truth. It cannot go against the character of Christ. It cannot go against the imitation of God the Father in heaven who said the work which is going to do in the two cherubs for them the righteousness and the justice, the righteousness and the justice. The same thing what he quotes again and again in Proverbs chapter 8 verses 21 and 22 to tell again and again the truth. I tread among the paths of righteousness. I go among the tracks of justice. 
and he has made us in the new man in the palm of and which is nothing but the righteousness and the justice being put together to be called as holiness and nothing but the benignity of truth benignity of truth benignity of truth such a high great privilege for us and Lord God the Holy Spirit cannot go against its character neither the son of the father in heaven neither Lord Yahweh Elohim the one who planned for us they cannot compromise their character therefore all have sinned and come short of the glory of the Lord of God the essence box of Lord of God all have sinned and how did he purchase us back he purchased us because of his one beloved son who has been sent for us the morning in the only eligible one that whosoever believes in him shall never perish but have an everlasting life and that's the day of birthday which we celebrate of that son and you have to realize that son came back again in the form of the spirit of truth And that spirit of truth leads us to produce character of Christ in us. And that's what the people don't realize today, though they celebrate their birthdays. Is God our Lord happy with us? You are happy to wear your clothes. We are happy to be called as Christians. But are we really true Christians in Christ? The inheritance of the Lord of a God for which you have been designed every day to call him as Abba Father with upon your tongue. Having yet the deeds of flesh germinating in you. <laughs> or to call very specifically the way of the worm to be fertilized by the sperms. They are running their race. They are running their race in your filthiness of fornication, prostitution. They are running their race to become disobedient to the word of the Lord of God, including at every point of your life, including for parents, marrying unbelievers. And yet coming to tell, we will have inheritance with the Lord. You will not lose your salvation, but you will lose that which is yours. For which under equal privilege and equal opportunity be given for every believer in Christ to reign and to reach MGG so that Lord of our God should not be ashamed when we stand in his presence to tell that he that we are his children the children of faith being founded upon by Bible doctrine the children of Kainiketesis who lead in truth to the Lord who have been led by the indwelling mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit to be the true worshippers of truth in Christ. To make their lives oriented for the plan of the Lord of a God, whether they have been chosen as effective ambassadors to the Lord. And in fact, indeed, every believer is an effective ambassador. And we speak about effective evangelists, effective missionaries. The service of the temple of the Lord of a God to be fulfilled every breath of our life. Now you know when is your death? How many long days you want to seize from the infallible and inerrant word of the Lord our God and put your trust in the mind of men and not look what the word of the Lord our God teaches every day. Not to look what is the true Christmas in Christ. Not to look at every breath how important it is for us to be controlled of the Spirit. So that we are being totally there to God not to grieve, not to squelch, not to lie. Your moral activities will change to virtue. If you have been constantly in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, because you look what the word says, and we cannot go against the word, no matter how great you may be, no matter how our president of the country may be, or no matter how our great king you may be in your committee members. And making yourself to be denominations, and we can call it as demonic denominations, not the divine denominations. The only one word which the Bible recognizes, homo thumedon, with one mind, with one passion, with one accord. That's not the demonic denominations which our Lord our God designed. He designed for us only one divine denomination and what it is, the spirit. It is the Bible, it is the doctrine of the mind of Christ. 
He designed for us with one mind, with one accord, with one passion, with one mouth to worship our Lord our God so that the palate of the mouth should speak truth in righteousness. Our lips, it should be for us constantly the truth and anything which is an abomination will be a wickedness to our lips and it cannot change the truth and our mouth should be speaking the righteous deeds of the great marvelous work of Christ. Because of that we have been called as wonderful. When we have such a great work for Christ, when we have such a great work to imitate God the Father of Heaven, what is the work you are thinking on this earth to occupy with? What is the work that you have been thinking on this earth to be occupied and to tell you are living a satisfied life in Christ? For a Macarian believer, Christ our Lord our God is enough. He has been absolutely satisfied with Christ. He is absolutely cherishing and nourishing when he is walking in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit by walking in the benignity standards of his truth. He is absolutely satisfied when he put upon the new man at every breath of his life after believing in Christ and reached maturity in the Lord. He is absolutely satisfied to walk as Christ our Lord our God walked in love in Christ. But there comes a stumbling block. A stumbling block, not to defend the gospel of the Lord of a God, neither his word, but to a stumbling block, where at the pastor's belly is God. For some pieces of bread or for some handful of barley, exchange the glory of the Lord of a God to a lie and tell, exegeome I, we shall reject, word upon word we shall reject, line upon line we shall reject and we'll make weekly ones. For what? To write your own death fate. To write and to see that you are not able to honor Lord's word and Lord could call you as Karam. How many days more yet you want to live a life of lie, dear brother? Consider diligently. A lion will be born to a lion, not a dog. Or not any other breed. We are the children of lion. Our life should be like a roaring lion for Christ in his truth, witnessing his truth. And for which reason we have been born to be as kings. We are now the king of the jungle of this wilderness. How can we let go? Not to rule. Not to walk. Not to produce the imitating character of Christ in us. How can we let go our life in the silly reasonings of this earth? We have a great life in the Lord. Don't waste it. Don't waste it just nominally becoming conventional Christians, yearly once Christians. But every breath of your life is a must. If our Lord our God could look, the two Hebrew words, Ra'e and Naba. If he sees you in the terms of his spiritual intellectual standards, who can stand in his presence? But yet his grace comes for us to comfort. To comfort and to look the life of the Lord of a God. To live a life that which has been pleasing to Christ. And if he goes further to Nabat, he shall say the desire of your soul which has to be in the mind of Christ has been replaced by the pleasure of this world. Therefore, you have been restoring Shiv. The great example will be the sundial of Ezekiel's life. Like that, what I have designed for you with the great marvelous Pele, you have fallen down. You have fallen down wonderfully. And you restore your soul with the flesh of this earth. You restore your soul with the old sin nature activities and you haven't restored your soul with the mind of Christ. The mechanics for the New Testament believer to understand the trichotomy nature. At the moment of salvation you have been told until unless you have been born again you cannot have to look or to enter into the kingdom of the Lord of a God. So what does he do? The Nicodemus tell how can I be born? But Christ our Lord of a God says being born with spirit and with water. Water representing not the water baptism. Water representing the gospel of truth. And the spirit representing the power of Lord God the Holy Spirit to create in you the great human spirit at the moment of your physical, uh, at the moment of your spiritual birth. Because physically when you have been born you are spiritually dead. But spiritually, when I've been being born, 
the word of the Lord will tell for us in the course of life to mortify the deeds of your flesh and the word of the Lord tells necromate to put to death the deeds of the flesh when you have been spiritually born if you have been properly instructed by the bona fide gifted male spiritual pastor teacher you are going to put the deeds of the flesh to death the vice versa of it being born to your parents physically alive spiritually dead being born to one parent in Christ by the gospel of the Lord of a God. You are now spiritually alive but being put to death the physical deeds of your body. Necromate. It takes time by and it takes process from moving from milk to bread, from bread to meat. It takes time. It takes day by day process. It just doesn't happen on an instant as the way how you have been given this human spirit for you. Therefore, the human spirit will be trained by Lord God, the Holy Spirit. And Lord God, the Holy Spirit, when it has been trained to your human spirit, your human spirit will change the facets of your soul. Your mentality, your evolution, your emotion, your norms and standards, your consciousness, everything will be changed from human viewpoint to divine viewpoint, thus ending your life to look. You are not interested in the old sin nature any longer further, but the frustration of the old sin nature that it cannot control you. And it takes time, dear brother. It cannot happen yearly once when the people come for Christmas. It cannot happen yearly once when the people join over here for first of this January 2018. Neither it comes to happen when the people come weekly once. To reach that standards to realize, as Samus tells in 2214, my I have been poured out like water, O oh Lord. My heart has become like wax. My bones have lost the location of it. Do you know what does it mean? Our Lord, our God calls for us to understand. If we don't search under the scanning process of the Lord, our God, Nabat process of the Lord, our God, so that he could be regarding us with pleasure and he could be for us as a great wealth of the Lord, our God, for us when we look and when we can understand that, that he should regard us with respect. If we don't come to those standards, the old sin nature will not be frustrated. Constantly it says, one step in the Lord, one step in the world. Constantly it says, why you want to waste your life so soon to become a saint? But you are a saint by birth in Christ Jesus our Lord. And in order to have your assurance, Ephesians 1, 4, before the foundation of the world, our Lord, our God has set you apart for him to be holy and blameless. What a privilege. This great privilege has not been given to this world who don't believe. But for us, the greatest privilege when God himself becomes God-man for us. And that is the privilege of this day. And a privilege for every believer in Christ who is walking and cherishing and fulfilling the work of Christ our Lord our God at every breath. This is the greatest privilege because they live for Christ now and for dying is profitable. Because they look for your edification and to be dead and to be profit and to be with the Lord our God is much more profitable. But their need to survive on this earth is for your sake. So that you can edify. So that you could be fed with the right word of the Lord of a God as a spiritual man of green pasture. You could make your lives worthy for his glory. You can have your eternal blessings of the heaven which has been given to you not to lose. The way how inheritance has been given and the way how it will be lose when you shall not do the works of the Lord of a God. But your salvation being secured in Christ you shall not lose it. The greatest privilege which has been given to us in the church age will never be again given in the future or in the past it was ever given. We the Gentiles know not our Lord our God yet he reveals for us through his word by the modified gifted male spiritual pastor teachers earlier than us who walked in the same path and now making our lives to be imitators of God by the daily mentoring ministry of Lord God the Holy Spirit. Such a great life belongs to us, dear brother. And Daniel carefully recorded. He knew the secrets belong to Father in heaven and he reveals them only to those prophets. 
The same principle for the New Testament church age believer. You are a New Testament prophet in Christ, having known what it has been recorded and kept for you carefully in the mystery doctrine of the church age. Have you ever understood what is your purpose in Christ in this church age? Have you ever recording carefully and guarding your life so that when Christ our Lord our God could scan you intently according to his word, will you be qualified to stand in his presence? To tell in nothing I shall be ashamed, but in every part of my body I have magnified the Lord of my rock to the maximum. Can you tell that? Not only your spirit and soul is in matter, dear brethren. In fact, even indeed your flesh, body, soul and spirit, Therefore, you have been told you are the temple of the Lord our God in this church age. What a true privilege it is for us to understand about that. We are the temple of the Lord our God of Shekinah glory dwelling in us in this church age. Doesn't it give you great inspiration to live a life of a holy one to the Lord? Besides the mandates given to you in first in second Peter when Christ of Lord our God says through Peter to re, to write as he is holy even you ought to be holy as he was walking in holiness even you ought to walk in the holiness of Yahweh Elohim not just wearing your clothes that makes you holy dear brother the clothes of your outwards apparel the clothes of your name and I call them the clothes of your hypocritical masks that doesn't make you to be holy. If the metamorphomai process doesn't happen, you are regardless of metaschematic zoans, transforming yourselves to be like the angel of light, but though you are not from inside. But by your deeds we shall know. What are the deeds you shall know them? If they ignore to come to learn the word of the Lord of our God every day, by the deeds itself we shall know their failures. They haven't taken the real root for metamorphomai, the inner transformation. But they have taken the root of metaschematizoans. When the word of the Lord of God says, day by day in Proverbs 8.34, unhappy is the one who listens to my word every day, who is alert to gather the word of the Lord of God every day, and to guard the word of the Lord of God every day, and stand at the portal jams of the door of me. That's what the auditorium today, the church, not the sanctuary. You as a believer in Christ are a sanctuary. Therefore, you have been told to keep away from blame upon or having any spot upon your inner man, as well as your soul, as well as your spirit, and as well as your indeed body and flesh. However, if you have a scar upon your face, along the way how it has been told for Cain, the way how he kept the scar, if it has been there for a lifetime, doesn't it represent for him that he was a failure in the respect to be given to his offering in the presence of the Lord because his heart was not straight, not the things of the blood that should be make the difference, but the heart that should be clean and pure and right. If that scar has been kept upon you, won't you be just annoyed with that? Won't you go for your plastic surgery? Won't you go for all the cosmetics to change that? Only for your physical appearance of the scar, if it is so, then how upon the scar tissue upon your soul? How upon the scar upon your spirit? What can cleanse it out? The blood of the Lord our God, which has been given for us in the terms of grace upon grace. The water of the mind of Christ every day to cleanse out. To cleanse the garbage that has been there in your thinking. The roguish mind with your avant thoughts to be cleansed every day because Lord of our God searches you diligently the same word Nabat could be used in 1 Corinthians 2.14 for Arona it searches diligently so that it can have a pleasure in you it can have a respect for your every word that you speak it can have a pleasure for you when you have been walking in the fellowship of Lord God the Holy Spirit that could be perfect, good and acceptable in the sight of the Lord of our God the same work of Arona, what does it do? It looks for us diligently, it searches in us to look intently. Every part of your body, every cell of your body, is it been there in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit or not? And furthermore, what does it do? It goes to teach you categories upon categories. Because you have to build up now from milk to bread, from bread to meat. So that you should produce the frustration of the old sin nature and to be in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit and being led by the Spirit. 
And furthermore, what the word of the Lord of God teaches for us. Not only just looking upon the categories and expounding the truth. It further gives you new thirst. What does this word say? What does that word say? What is the meaning of it in the original Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic? What is that? We have to expound word upon word, line upon line, precept upon precept, day by day. And there is the time for you to neglect the truth. We shall know them by their deeds. Not only the pastor teachers who reject to teach the word of the Lord of our God every day, the proper isagogical, categorical and exegetical explanation of the word with the right dispensing technique of dispensations. But in fact, indeed, those believers who neglect to come and understand and stand in the portals of the jams of the door of the word of the Lord of our God to learn wisdom. And where the wisdom have been hidden, in Christ they have been concealed. And for whom is going to teach? The secrets of the Lord our God reveals to them those who are prophets. And every believer in, in this church age is a prophet. He is a New Testament prophet to know the entire canon of scripture. And his life has to be the way how he leads like light and salt of this earth. Shining like light and showing forth his every word as salt on this earth. That is what every believer ought to be because they are of polytimo privileges. They are of heavenly citizens. They are not of this earth any longer. It is the way how you can understand physically alive, spiritually death. But when you are spiritually born again after believing in Christ, the deeds of the flesh have to be put to death. Necromate. Colossians 3 1 5. If you are not putting to death, necromate. Your spiritual birth has no meaning at all in Christ. That's how we find in the New Testament theology. That's what we learn from the KT theology of the Lord. And looking back to the things pertaining to Christ, very specifically, we meet with some of the deepest Old Testament glimpses into the prophetic words future here in the book of Daniel. Not only are the secrets vividly depicted in symbolical knowledge, but we find repeatedly Daniel, who had understanding in all visions and dreams, seeking help to understand the interpretation of the revelations being given in him, so that how good too it is to see Daniel carefully recorded and us been recording all the God had made known to him. If we also carefully record what all the Lord of God has given for us, in the Genesis 1, 1 to Revelation 22 to 21, by that we mean to become the king in Christ by writing down at least once and second time writing down, but I go through write with the Elijah and with Daniel the three times because once in the uninspired word, the second time we write in the interlinear word, the Greek and the Hebrew and the, and the things pertaining to English as well as into the language of the original so that we can understand the difference between the translations. And the third one, when we go to write in the original Hebrew, Greek and Aramaic, by that time we should be master enough in that. So that we can carefully record every word of the Lord of our God because that's our life. We cannot let it go so easily. That's our life. We cannot let go the honor of the Lord of our God just so easily because the honor of the word of the Lord of our God is our major purpose, says Psalms 138 too, for which we are having the breath in our nostrils. And not nothing for anything else on this earth. We have breath in our nostrils to honor Lord's word above his name. Then do you think for what? Your lustful patterns of the old sin nature to be fulfilled. You have been told to be aware to be pure. First Thessalonians 5.23 The spirit, soul and body. Pure. Those who practice such and such. Why would sin could be acceptable? First Corinthians 6, 9 and 10. Will lose the inheritance of the Lord. Inheritance for which you have been designed uniquely in your mansions to be with Christ. Remember those things, dear brethren. Negligence not to grow up in the word of the Lord of our God every day will make you to lose and to get indulged in the lustful patterns of this old sin nature and lose the rewards of the inheritance in Christ. Be aware of it. Life is too short. Carefully, we need to record everything. Therefore, what do we do? We go to prove our kingship. The kingship of Deuteronomy 17.18 the kingship of writing at least thrice in our life following Elijah as our example, Daniel as our example. 
the deep things belong to the one where our Lord our God reveals to them those who are prophets to him. And how about the duty of the pastor teacher? His work is to diligently study from the old and the new, get something new that which could be absolutely great for them to understand and to change their lives in the right holiness of Yahweh Elohim. Therefore, though Daniel had understanding in all wisdom and in, in all visions and dreams, he sought help to understand the interpretation of the revelations which have been given to him. Like that, we come in the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, to seek and learn the things of the inspired word of the Lord our God which has been given for us in the terms of Theonostas. This great inspired, infallible and inherent word of the Lord our God. In the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit, we come to seek and search the truth. What a great privilege it is for us that we have been given this great work. But yet you are not able to imitate God the Father in heaven. We have been given the completed canon of scripture. But remember, man can stand against his vengeance. You may try to fortify yourself against the words of truth, the way how Jeremiah was been made. Come, let us smite him and not listen to his words, that he may do not physically, but your internal thoughts may be so. But remember, vengeance belongs to our Lord. When you sow to the wind, we will reap war wind. Does not the word say for us? When you sow to the wheat, you will get thorns in Jeremiah chapter 12. Your lives have been filled with thorns. And the peace will be no to the flesh. But great peace to them who are in the spirit. That's our privilege in Christ. Why we have peace in our spirit? In the fellowship of Lord God, the Holy Spirit? Because we believe Christ our Lord our God destroyed the works of the devil. He has freed from our wild service. He has redeemed his people from all iniquity. And he has ransomed them for the power, and he has ransomed them out of the power of the grave and of death, and even the last man known as devil. Men had fallen into allegiance to Satan, and he was fast bound by his chains. But a stronger than Satan came into his help, and we believe the Almighty Savior of our Lord our God was taken birth today, came forth from the Father to this rescue. And by his death of his incarnation and crucifixion and resurrection from the dead, he led captivity captive and triumphed over all the principalities and powers, including the chief fallen angel known as Satan. Thus Christ our Lord our God, we believe by one offering which he once offered, ransomed his people as nothing less than his precious blood could redeem them from the dreadful bondage of their end of the sin and Christ Jesus our Lord our God paid that amazing price for us in his amazing grace all who believe in his name are made free and that's what we have been told you have been there free to say as in Galatians 5 1 stand fast in the liberty wherewith Christ our Lord our God has set you free and do not entangle yourself once again into the yoke of bondage and those who are in the spirit of the Lord our God for them there is no condemnation as such the word says in Romans 8 1 those who are in Christ no condemnation to them Therefore we find all who believe in his name are made free. Christ has procured the liberty from the slavery of the sin of the sin sinful market of Satan. And we now love him and serve him. For this reason, therefore, we believe and we speak the truth. Because we can do nothing against the truth, but only for the truth we abide. Therefore, dear brethren, know your calling in Christ. Know your life in the Lord. You are a trichotomy nature. And your inner man needs the spiritual food every day as your physical man needs three times or two times a day. If they follow the biblical principles of Elijah, it's a twice a day. And if they follow the world attitude, it is thrice a day. And how much more your inner man should be for your spiritual realm? How your inner man should try to look upon the greatest spiritual manna ever given for us in the churches of the completed canon of scripture. Life is too short to waste in the times of this world. But in this short span of time, life, life could be more meaningful when we walk in the Spirit of the Lord, the Spirit of life in Christ, to be the imitators of Lord our God in this church age. So I wish you all a Merry Christmas. Think over these issues as we shall come back and continue tomorrow. With our head bowed and eyes closed, the closing moments being dedicated to those who are here without Christ, without hope, and without eternal life. Inaudibly telling to Lord God the Father that you believe upon my Christ, my Lord, my Rock, my God, my salvation. That is the moment itself. You shall have this eternal truth. This eternal truth for us is so very simple. Believe in Christ, you shall be saved. 
I ask for the believer, the greatest matter is to grow up in grace and knowledge of Bible doctrine. Wherewith you shall learn to acquire to possess know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. And for the pastor, teacher, the greatest merit is to carry Sothon Lagan, herald the word in season or of season, because of the diamond of my witnesses, wherewith they have been called. The number one diamond of my witnesses in willing trinity, followed by Bible in our hands. And number two diamond of my witnesses, our hearers. If there are no hearers, dear brethren, do not worry, besides nature, the entire angelic host will be witnesses. But what is our work? Our work is to rightly divide the word of the Lord of our God, so that we could make the believers also to imitate God the Father in heaven. To be the followers of God the Father in heaven by putting upon the new man in the terms of Andy Kaisu in a Kaiho Setis Thessalatia. So that we shall not be found ashamed when he nabats us, when he certainly scans us, and when he regards us with pleasure, and he regards us with respect. And to rejoice in us, his purpose is all about. When we rejoice in Christ our Lord of our God, he certainly rejoices in us through his word by teaching us and making our life to understand the heavenly calling to look upon the thoughts that are of the heaven not the thoughts of this earth the earth will perish the flesh will perish but those who live in the spirit will have peace but those who are in the flesh will never have peace so which way you go dear brother and you decide as we shall come back and continue tomorrow in the same divine illumination of God, the holy spirit as he leads us for his glory at every breath of our life so think over it Father, what a great privilege it is. And once again, we come to give you the thanks for the, for the gracious work given after 2,000 years as well, O Lord, which you have sent your dear beloved Son for us in understanding the Hanukkah festival of his birth. The festival of Christ the Lord is being born, so that glory to my Lord God Almighty, to the highest, and peace be with the man can all this earth to those who believe upon him. So, Father, we are thankful for this great day of incarnation of Christ, our Lord, our God. Father, as we go along with these things, help us to understand the true word and make our life as a meaningful service for thy glory. In Christ's matchless, peerless, gracious name we pray, Father, so that the people can truly understand this great mercy of Merry Christmas in our lives. May Lord God, the Holy Spirit, enlighten us in these things, O Lord, for we ask it in Christ's name, Sovereign Lord. Amen.